Spider-Man. Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel, I hope you're all well. In this video we are going to be reviewing Spider-Man which is the first movie in Sam Raimi's Spider-Man trilogy and is just such a fun and truly comics accurate representation of the Spider-Man storyline which is really really cool and also it paces through all of the origin material relatively quickly and does such a good job in terms of building both the lead character and the hero namely Peter Parker and Spider-Man, whilst also concurrently building the main villain, Norman Osborn slash the Green Goblin, which is really, really cool. And also, it was made over 20 years ago, and so some of the visuals don't hold up that well today. But you know, that being said, it is still such a super fun superhero storyline, and from a box office point of view, it was one of the most successful superhero movies as it made over $800 million dollars in the box office which is absolutely wicked and I'm going to be breaking everything down for you in this movie review. So from a storyline point of view, this movie is predominantly building the world of Peter Parker, of Spider-Man and going through all of the origin material, which like I said before, it goes through all of it really, really quickly and does such a good job in terms of building this world, building the characters, building the relationships and still having a really compelling storyline in there with brilliant visual moments which is really really cool i mean it starts off by introducing us to the peter parker character and you can really see that he's a bit of a nerdy loser photographer type character in high school who then gets bitten by the radioactive spider he has this friendship with the very rich and suave harry osborn character he's got his own issues with his father in terms of expectation then he can really lean on his best friend peter really really well you then see that when the Peter Parker character realizes that he's got these spider-like abilities, he does initially go down the cocky route in terms of wanting to show off and impress the Mary Jane Watson character who incidentally is currently going out with the Flash Thompson character. But this unfortunately leads to the death of his dear uncle Ben where he learns the pivotal lesson that with great power comes great responsibility. And then we have the massive duel between Spider-Man and Norman Osborn slash the Green Goblin. And on that point, the thing that I really loved about this movie is that it was simultaneously building the lead character and the lead villain so that you can really understand where both of them are coming from. In particular with Norman Osborn, you can see that he is being totally rejected by the board, his company that he has put his name into and quite literally his heart and soul is crumbling in front of him and he goes down this dark path he kind of gives into his evil side and he is able to gain everything that he wants for a short amount of time but then every action has a reaction and you can see the consequences quite literally being his downfall and also i really like the mini world building that they were doing as well so for example his life in the daily bugle with the brilliant j jonah jameson character and how he's trying to find his feet in a corporate space and also the oscorp world where the norman osborne character's world is quite literally crashing down in front of him while still being a very powerful father figure to the Harry Osborn character. And then of course you have the high school aspects where you see his desire to want to have a relationship with the Mary Jane Watson character, his friendship with Harry Osborn, a character which really gets tested across all of the three movies. And then of course his home life with Aunt May and with Uncle Ben, which really gets examined when tragedy hits and Uncle Ben unfortunately passes away. And so from a storyline point of view, I feel like the first Spider-Man movie did a really, really good job in terms of setting up the origin of this character. Obviously, we've seen it being done quite a few times now in comic books, animations, and movies. But that being said, I feel like this movie did a really good job in terms of doing a truly comics accurate representation of the origin material. So the casting characters in the first Spider-Man movie really does make it what it is, and people are absolutely loving some of the casting decisions and their portrayals as they really are comics accurate. That being said, there are one or two that I do have a little bit of a question mark with, and I'm going to talk about them now. So first up, we of course have Tobey Maguire, who did such a phenomenal portrayal of both the Spider-Man character and the Peter Parker character, and the love-hate relationship that he has with his duality across the three movies was just represented by Tobey Maguire super, super well. And I think the reason that people really like Tobey Maguire is that he really brings the comics aspects of this character to life. So for example, the nerdy, unassuming, bullied character who then really comes into his own as a superhero as Spider-Man was just depicted 
really, really well. That being said, I do also like the portrayals by Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland as well. Andrew Garfield definitely brought the intelligent skater reclusive aspects to life with this character and I feel like you can really attribute the cooler aspects with the 90s animation version with the Andrew Garfield character and then with Tom Holland he's really bringing that modern geek aspect to life and of course he's able to lean on the other MCU characters as well. Then we have another brilliant casting decision which was Willem Dafoe as Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin character and I really love the range of emotions and character attributes that Willem Dafoe was bringing to this role as he just did such a good job with that. So for example we have the very patriarchal controlling and judgment aspect as a father and he just has such high expectations for his son Harry Osborn and you can also tell that there is some conflict happening with his wife slash ex-wife which is why he's got certain beliefs that he's also imposing onto Harry Osborn with his relationship with Mary Jane as well. But then from a business aspect, this is the aspect that I feel a lot of people can connect with as Norman Osborn was spending so much time and so much money and so much effort really building his brand and business empire and this board of directors are now gonna strip it all away from him and literally leave him humiliated, which is why when he was given the option to go down the darker path with the Green Goblin, he kind of did go down that path and then he just became a bit of a crazed lunatic and I just feel like this character's depiction was so interesting. You can also make some parallels with Darth Vader and I just feel like because of all of those reasons this is just such an iconic character and then also the Green Goblin aspects. I just love the moral decisions that he was giving to Spider-Man in terms of do you save Mary Jane or do you save this group of strangers and also how he was also giving Spider-Man the options of joining him and when Spider-Man said no, how he just then wanted to kill Spider-Man. So I just feel like both of the Norman Osborn character aspects and the Green Goblin character aspects are just super interesting in this movie. Next up we have Kirsten Dunst who is obviously playing Mary Jane Watson. Now I'm not totally convinced by her portrayal in this movie as Mary Jane in the comics and in the animations is depicted as this very strong feisty character and I don't think Mary Jane necessarily tapped into all of that. I feel like she did a good performance in terms of the character journey across the three movies, which I thought was really, really great, but I just didn't ever feel like this was the true representation of what this character is all about. Contrastingly, I feel like Emma Stone totally nailed the Gwen Stacy character so much better than the portrayal in Spider-Man 3, and I just never felt the same with Kirsten Dunst's portrayal of the Mary Jane character, but you know, that being said, given the script that she had, I feel like she definitely made the most of it. Next up we have James Franco, who I honestly also think was a brilliant casting decision for the Harry Osborn character. He definitely brought so many different levels to this character. His arc similarly across the three movies, I think is absolutely brilliant. And in this movie, he definitely plays the rich, smooth, suave, self-centered and jealous character aspects. And I thought it was a really interesting decision how they then partnered up Harry and Mary Jane, which definitely created a really interesting dynamic between the core trio of characters. And he's also really protective of the Peter Parker character. And I just feel like James Franco really did own the Harry Osborn character completely. Next up, we have one of the best decisions ever made in superhero casting, which is J.K. Simmons, as the J. Jonah Jameson character literally was a lift and shift from the comic books and the animations into live action. And I just feel like he was just so hilarious in all of his line delivery, the way he was just totally becoming the J. Jonah Jameson character. And you really did believe that you were in this newspaper empire in the Daily Bugle, which is absolutely brilliant. Next up, we have Rosemary Harris, who was just bringing so much heart and so much emotion for the Aunt May character. And you really felt the heartbreak that this character was experiencing when Uncle Ben passed away. Next up we have Joe Mangelino, and I did like his portrayal as Flash Thompson. I much preferred the portrayal by Chris Zalek in the Amazing Spider-Man universe, so much better than the rebooted version of Flash Thompson in the MCU adaptation of that world. But as far as this movie is concerned, I feel like Joe did a pretty good job. And then finally, we have a cameo appearance from Octavia Spencer herself, absolutely hilarious. When you go back to watch this movie, it's really nice to see Octavia Spencer in here. And so from a casting character's point of view, they did such a brilliant job in Spider-Man. So from a visuals point of view, you know, this movie was made 20 years ago and some of the visuals don't necessarily stand the test of time, especially when you compare them to the two rebooted versions, namely the Amazing Spider-Man series and the MCU Spider-Man series. But you know, that being said, some of the stunt pieces in this movie look absolutely awesome. Some of the battles 
between Spider-Man and the Green Goblin character looks truly phenomenal. And like I said before, I love the moral decisions and dilemma that the Green Goblin character was giving to the Spider-Man character in terms of whether he chooses Mary Jane or he decides to save this group of young kids. It felt very similar to the dilemmas that the Joker presents the Batman character. And so I feel like the Green Goblin character definitely was channeling a little bit of Joker aspects also. Speaking of the Green Goblin, I know there's been a lot of criticism about his look and his mask as well. It was very static and definitely did prevent a lot of emotion and fear being expressed through that character. But you know, that being said, it still does feel a bit scary from a Halloween point of view. It's really interesting if you look at the other options that they could have had. They were going to do a little bit of a goblin-y mask that is very similar to how you've seen them in the 90s shows, but ultimately they decided to go with this more structured and more corporate looking mask. And also it definitely has all of the staples and the iconic moments that you would hope for a Spider-Man character. For example, all of the reflexes, which are really exhibited well during the wrestling match and all of the swinging across New York City definitely looks very spectacular. And so from a visuals point of view, even though it was filmed quite a long time ago and certain aspects are a little bit dated and very apparent, that is CGI and in front of a green screen, it still does work really, really well for the Spider-Man movie. <laughs> So it's really interesting from a comparison point of view as there are some things that I absolutely loved about this movie and certain other things that I really loved about other interpretations of Spider-Man. So let's go through them all now. So the first one is that I definitely think Spider-Man 2, the sequel to this movie, is definitely the best Spider-Man movie out there purely because of the emotional journey. It really is supercharged in that movie for the Peter Parker character and I think that is credit in this movie as it definitely built and set up everything to allow the second movie to totally blast off and really do the deeper emotional storytelling. But you know, that being said, from a villain point of view, I feel like Norman Osborn and the Green Goblin is probably my favorite villain across all of the Spider-Man movies, as this was just such a complex, layered character that was interwoven into the life of Peter Parker. He definitely had his own storyline in terms of all of the business brand stuff being taken away from him and just his raw pride and ego really fueling the Green Goblin aspect of this character and then ultimately his battle sequences with the Spider-Man character, how he was trying to manipulate him, how he was trying to guilt trip him and how he was even trying to control him. In the end, I just feel like that character was absolutely brilliant, which is why he's probably one of my favorite villains across all of the Spider-Man movies. I also do really like the interpretations by Andrew Garfield and Tom Holland for their own versions of Peter Parker and Spider-Man, but I feel like Tobey Maguire definitely will be remembered for really bringing that authentic, nerdy, scientific aspects to the Peter Parker character, and I thought it was hilarious how he was so easily leaning into the DC world in terms of using the Superman line and the Shazam line in this movie as well. Obviously, that probably won't happen now, given all of the rules by the different studios. If anyone's going to get away with it now, it's probably Deadpool. Also, going back to Green Goblin and Spider-Man, I really love the inner strength that the Spider-Man character was able to channel in the final act of this movie where Green Goblin and Norman Osborn really did destroy the Spider-Man character both physically and psychologically and really he wasn't a match to the Green Goblin character but he was able to really find that inner strength and use his wit and his spider sense to really ultimately defeat the Green Goblin character. So I thought that was really impressive, really motivating and why this character is such a good role model as well and I also thought the Dr Pepper sponsorship moments were pretty obvious and were really hilarious in their own right as well and so from a comparison point of view I feel like the first Spider-Man movie is definitely pretty wicked. So overall I really really enjoyed going back to watch the first Spider-Man movie along with the X-Men film this really did put superhero movies on the map and really did allow the industry to do what it's doing today namely having all superhero movies really dominating this industry which wasn't the case before and I do feel like from a storyline point of view, from a character's point of view and from a visual's point of view, this movie is just super super iconic and really did bring to life the Spider-Man universe so well and I feel like Sam Raimi really did make it a comics accurate portrayal of not only Peter Parker and Spider-Man but also the world as well which makes this film super super epic and so for all of those reasons I'm going to give the first Spider-Man movie a solid 7.5 out of 10. I'd love to hear what you think, so please let me know in the comment section below. Otherwise, I look forward to seeing you in my next video.